Hey everyone, welcome back and we're going to start a new unit. This is the first video in a measurement unit and today we're going to look at time. Now we're going to look at it a couple different ways. We're going to look at it, at it from an angle of a calendar amount of time, but most importantly we're going to look at actually telling the time on a clock. And I know that's a skill some of you are desperately wanting to know. So let's get started right away. And so I have a, a calendar here of October 2017, and the circle date is October 24th, 2017. And the way I've written it up here, maybe your teacher writes that way on, ta on the board at the front of the classroom. I know I do, and we get to see the full way it's spelt um, for the month. And we have those ordinal numbers, the TH after the 24th, and two, you know, comma 2017. And we're going to learn how to write in something called metric notation with a calendar. And so you can see here we have uh, the year, we have the month and the day. And we start with the greatest unit of time being the year. It's, I mean, what I mean is the largest amount, you know, a year takes here in 65 days. And then we're working our way towards the lowest amount of time, which is the day. Now the month is in the middle because it's in between um, the year and, uh, you know, a day and, and how long the time goes. So when we write the date in metric notation, we use two digits for the month and two digits for the day. We're going to use the same, you know, all four digits for the year. And so here I have the date circled is April 9th, 1982. And so in metric notation, we'd write 1982-04-09. When I say oh, I'm talking about the zero. Um, the reason we do this is the, especially the date, the, the date, the day makes more sense. You know, that's the same digit that's here. But why do we switch this to a four for April? April is the fourth month. So I'm sorry, you're going to have to do some memorizing here. You know, January is the first month, so we use one. We would use one in that situation. February is the second month, two, March three, April four, all the way to December twelve. Now, if there is, um, we always want two digits. So if there is a single digit, like four for April, we use zero four, um, just so that it's all uniform. We want two digits. So if it was, let's say, June, June is the six months, we would, six months, we would use zero six. I'm not going to lie, there's lots of different ways of showing the date with a calendar. Um, I've encountered quite a few, and sometimes, you use logic to puzzle it out and sometimes you won't know what it is technically unless you talk to the person so I'll explain so sometimes so we we've been looking at metric notation so um, in this case um, we have April so we have 1982 fourth month ninth day but you know I've seen 1982 period um, I've seen this before I've seen slashes instead. I have seen, you know, this way. All of a sudden the month and the day are changing around and the year goes at the back end. I've seen that before. I've seen similar to metric notation, but it's backwards. Um, we've, I've seen, I've seen, I've seen where, I'll draw a line here, you know, periods again with the, with this. This is where it gets really confusing. Um, or even this. Sometimes I've even seen dashes. So instead of a period or a slash that I've been kind of showing you, it's like so, or again, maybe it's backwards. Um, you get my drift, right? There's there's plenty of people out there doing many different things. Uh, I'll be honest, I don't do quite the metric notation way. I do like this method the best personally. All I'm doing is adding, you know, for original metric notation slashes in there. Now we get to a problem here when we encounter things like these two guys, and the problem is we have you know a four and a nine. Well, how do I know which one is the month and which one is the date? The day of the you know the day of the month how do i know this is april how do i know this is not september you know how do we know it's not backwards so that's where it gets confusing now when it's something like 
let's say 2017 um, April 18th I know even if this one was over here that this can't possibly be the month because there's only 12 months in the year but when we have ones that go up to 12 it gets a little confusing so I'm glad someone has come up with this idea of metric notation because we have the largest amount of time to the smallest amount of time. So I highly recommend you just stick with one and, and you know it. Uh, metric notation probably being the easier one to figure out. All right, I'm gonna get you to try. Uh, I have three dates circled. I'd like you to write these in metric notation. Pause it, come back when you're ready. Now you may have noticed I have a different calendar. It's a different year, so metric notation. So the first one, 2002, actually all three will be 2002, same year. And they're all in February, which is the second month. So I can write 02 for all of these. And then, so for the first one, uh, February 1st, we would go like so. For February 18th, we would go like so. And for February 28th, we would go like so. Now, what is the opposite? What's the standard date for the following, um, for these two? So what I mean standard, write the full month out, write, write the date. Pause it, come back when you're ready. Okay, so this is the third month, so that's March 5th, 2017, and this would be September is the ninth month. September 21st, 2001. All right, let's move on to talking about time now um, on a clock. And so I just have this graphic of Tyrell, his morning routine, you know, at eight o'clock he gets up, it's quarter after eight, he goes and eats breakfast, it's half past eight, he starts leaving for school, and quarter to nine, Tyrell arrives at school. So let's talk this through. A clock with numbers and hands is something called an analog clock. And a clock face shows the numbers from 1 to 12. Now, there is some clocks out there that don't have the numbers and they just have lines. So you have to kind of count. But know that there's only 12 numbers on the clock. Now, there's 24 hours in one day. I don't know if you know that. There's only 24 hours in one day. So each day, the hour hand, which is the smaller hand, that would be this guy here. The hour hand moves around the clock twice. And it takes one hour for the hour hand to move from one hour to the next. So for this, this hour hand for it to move to the seven, it is going to take a whole hour. It takes one hour for that hand. It slowly creeps moves. And if you don't believe me, um, if you have nothing to do for an hour, look at an analog clock and watch that little hand actually will slowly creep along. Um, it takes an hour for it to move from one number to the next. Now there's also 60 minutes in one hour, and each hour the minute hand moves once around the clock. So the larger hand goes around the clock once in an hour. The whole way in one hour it will move around the clock. So the hour hand in one hour only moves from one number to the next, but the minute hand, the larger hand, goes around the whole clock once every hour. Now it takes only 15, well not only, it takes 15 minutes for the clock to move a quarter of the way around the clock. If it's 15 minutes after 10 o'clock, and maybe I will move the clock around. So 15 minutes after 10 o'clock, um, we say it's a quarter after 10 or 10.15. We're saying a quarter after 10 because 10 o'clock has already come and gone and it's a quarter of an hour past. Remember, there's 15 minutes in a quarter, uh, an hour is 60 minutes, so um, there's four, you know, if I, if you take the clock and divide it into four, um, each one is worth 15 minutes. So 15 minutes after 10 o'clock, quarter after 10 or 10, 15 is all common language. It takes 30 minutes for the hand to move halfway around the clock. So we've taken 60 minutes, divide it into two halves, that's 30 minutes. If it's 30 minutes after 10 o'clock, we say half past 10 or 10.30. You say half past because it's halfway across. It takes 45 minutes for the clock hand to move three quarters of the way around the clock. So if it is 
45 minutes after 10 o'clock. We say it is 10.45. However, at this point, there's only 15 minutes left until the next hour. So quite often we say it's a quarter to 11. It's quarter to the next hour. Now, something I want you to pay attention to. The hour hand is not pointing at the 10. Do you see that? Remember, the hour hand is slowly moving every hour um, from one number to the next. It doesn't go, you know, it doesn't go from 10 to 11 like all of a sudden, doing it's, it's there. It's slowly moving. So it you will see the hour hand slightly in between the two. That is normal. That is what we need to do. And so I'm pointing this out because you don't want to make some mistakes where you assume that, oh, it's 11, you know, it's 11.45. No, it's closer to 11.45. It hasn't quite hit the 11 yet. So that's something to pay attention to where the hour hand is actually pointing. Now, of course, there's another type of clock. It's called a digital clock. It has no clock face. It has no hands. And it shows the time using numbers and a colon. And if a colon is the two dots right there, colon. The hour is the first one. And the minutes is the second number. All right, I'm going to get you to try some. What is the time shown on each clock? Pause it. Come back when you're ready. All right, so remember the hour hand points to the hour and the minute hand points to the minutes. So in this first one, the top left, um, the hour hand is the smaller hand is pointing to the seven. This is just simply seven o'clock. If we go to the next one, top right, um, you can see the hour hand is not quite at the 10. It's in between. So we would say this is 9.45 or we could say quarter to 10 because remember it's you know 15 minutes almost to the next hour so quarter to 10 also works uh, bottom left again the hour hand is not at any of those hour hands um, it's part way between four and five until it hits that five it's not five so it is 4 30 or we could say half past four and then lastly we have um, the hour hand is very close to the one, so it's a good guess that it's 1.15. We could also say quarter after one, it's quarter of the way. Now let's get a little bit more precise. Let's look at all these individual numbers. It takes five minutes for the minute hand to move from one number to the next, five minutes. So right now, if I have it there for it to hit the next two, it takes five minutes. So from here to here, that takes five minutes. So from here to here, five minutes. From here to here, another five minutes. How much is that all together? 10 minutes, 15 minutes, 20 minutes, 25, 30, 35, 40, 45, 50, 55, etc. Now, if you don't have these memorized, you will memorize this eventually. Think of the hour and just multiply it by five, and that will tell you how many minutes it is. So if it's at the four, it's at the four. And I don't know if you're noticing the hour hand moving slowly. If it's at the four, remember that's we're going to skip count by fives. Four times five is 20. So in this case, the hour being at four, this is 420. Now this analog clock shows 20 minutes after nine. We would write 920. We could say 20 after nine or 20 past nine or just 920. And I just, again, I got to point this out. This hour hand does not pointing at the nine right now, it is slightly going that way. So always pay attention to where the hour hand is. This clock shows 55 minutes after 11 o'clock or five minutes before 12. You can look at it two different ways. And so we would write 11.55. We could say five before 12, five to 12, 11.55. Now remember the 11, if we do five times 11, for skip pick counting 11 times, five times 11 is 55. That's where that 55 is coming from. Um, you you might say that the, the hour hand is almost at the 12. It's not quite, if you look really closely, it's not quite there, but it's almost there. Now this digital clock shows 20 minutes after three o'clock. We would write, you know, like the digital clock says, 320. We would say 320, sorry, that is a mistake. 320. We could also say 20, 20 after three. This digital clock shows five minutes after six o'clock. We could write, we could write, you know, as it says, 605. 
Um, I don't know why we always say O. Oh, um, 605. It technically is a zero. 605, five after six. Um, both of those work. All right, I'm going to get you to try this. I want you to tell the time. Put this to the test. Be aware of where the hour hand is. Okay. Uh, a hint is if it's pat, the minute hand is past the six, the halfway point, um, it's on its way to the next hour. Um, if it's, you know, below less than the 30 minutes, it's probably closer to the hour that it currently is. That's my little hint. That's the way I look at it. So look at the minute hand, look at the hour hand, come back when you're ready. All right, I'm going to go top left all the way to bottom right. Um, the hour hand, I'm sorry, these clocks, it's a little harder to see, but this, this guy here is the hour hand. It is past the five. So it is 520 or 20 after five. Um, in the next one, the hour hand is this one here. It is very close to two o'clock, but not quite there. So this would be 150. We can also say 10 to two, 10 to two. Um, also works because that means it's 10 minutes to the next hour, which is two o'clock. Bottom left here, this is the hour hand here um, that is not quite at the four. It's close. This would be 340 or 40 past three. Um, when I find with the 40s, we quite often just say 40, 340. Or you could say 20 to four, I guess, as well. And then lastly, uh, I purposely picked this one because both numbers are pretty much pointing at the same. Um, same thing. It's not quite at the 11 yet, the hour hand. So this is actually 1055. Okay. Um, we could also say 5 to 11. That would also work. All right. In this lesson, we looked at calendars and using calendars to tell the time, to tell the date. So we've also looked at an analog clock mostly to to tell the time and we use um, multiplying by five a lot and we just use the, the hour hand and the minute hand to look at the clock uh, and we've also learned a couple of different ways to pronounce or say these properly there's a lot of different ways to say it like this guy again for example uh, 150 or you say what the next hour is going to be if it's getting close um, you would say um, 10 to 2. Now when we get, we only do, when we say to the next hour if it's close, probably around here um, at the 45 mark. If we were at 520, we're not going to say 40 to 6. That's kind of weird. We don't say that. So generally, we, uh, unless we hit the, the minute hand hitting around the, the 9 at the 45 minute mark, we don't generally talk about the next hour. Um, I mean, if you want to, you know, if it's 705 and someone says hey what the time is what time is it and you say it's 55 to 8 you could you would sound kind of bizarre anyways um this is definitely a life skill so please remember in life math happens take care